I'm here today at Hill Helicopters, the first truly private luxury manufacturer of helicopters based here in the UK. I'm going to be having a discussion with Dr. Jason Hill, founder, chairman and chief engineer, about his journey within the industry and the collaboration between Hill Helicopters and NCMT. Today we're, we're doing in-house manufacturing of what will probably end up to be the single most expensive part of our GT50 gas turbine engine that powers the helicopter. So the, the compressor is an extremely challenging component to make. It's, it's horribly five axis, so it's curved in every direction. You have to manufacture the, the thicknesses of the blades to, to very, very thin wall thicknesses. There are tiny radiuses on the leading edges, the tip clearances between the blades and the shroud that it sits in are tiny and really important to performance. Surface finish is really uh, important and then because of the, the fact it operates at close to 400 degrees Celsius, the materials that we have to use are very difficult. It's a high grade titanium that's challenging to machine. So you bring all of those things together and you've got a very, very difficult part to make that will probably end up being the most expensive part in the, the engine. So being able to make that in-house means that you've got the ability to make that as cost effectively as is humanly possible. But not only that, it gives us complete flexibility as we go through prototyping and development to make little design changes as we see fit without having to go back out to a supplier and renegotiate another round of de development. So it's vital that you can make this stuff yourself if you want to be a manufacturer of a, a product like a, an aircraft in particular. The Akuma machines, particularly the, the, the Genos range, uh, sit in a really nice niche where they're very, very high quality machines, they're proven, they have a reputation in, in aerospace, they're very accurate uh, and they're reliable. So they're, uh, they're uh, just, just expensive enough to be, uh, to be reliable and high quality and deliver what we need, um, but they're, they're cost effective enough that when we put these machines to work, when they're knocking out compressors two shifts every day of the, of the week, the, the contribution of the capital and the running cost of the machine to that part price is about as efficient as it could be on, on many other machines, even machines that are, that are a little bit uh, uh, less expensive. Um, so they, they provide the perfect balance for a precision aerospace application of, of quality and cost, which in general aviation is really important. But we need to deliver a helicopter at essentially the same price as a supercar. So the capital cost of our equipment against the performance they deliver and the productivity is really, really important, it's very sensitive to us. NCMT have been, uh, have been great. We, when we, you've got to remember, we, we started with uh, essentially three empty factories and we had to develop all of the capabilities that we needed to build all of the parts in the engine, the gearboxes, the drivetrain and the helicopter from scratch. Getting back into the, the game and having the support of a very experienced partner that's completely up to speed but took on board what the real requirements were um, and, and were able to point us in the direction of the right equipment in the, the range uh, and reassure me that these were the right combination between price point and, and performance for our application. Um, and then beyond that, the, the installation support and the after sales care has been brilliant as we've brought our, our own capability in the company up to the level where it is today where we can produce those kind of aerospace grade components on a, on a daily basis. So they've been, they've been fantastic really, I'd, I'd recommend them to anybody. The, the goal uh, that we're working to at the, the moment is to try and get to, to first flight by the end of this year, so by the end of 2023, uh, and then <coughs> into production by the end of the, the following year. So there's still a lot of things up in the air, you know, we're, we're still going through planning permission for the factory big enough to support this uh, incredible demand that we've created for the for the product and there's still a a good deal of engineering left to do but uh, those are the targets that we're, we're we're shooting for at the moment and as we sit here today we're on track for that. <laughs>